Northwest Liberty News, picking the lock on the shackles of tyranny. Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Klingenberg and welcome to this segment of Learning for Liberty brought to you by Northwest Liberty News. Today we're going to be talking about calcium bentonite, which is a clay used for many different alternative health reasons and uses. So I just want to get into, first off, explaining the different types of clays. There's all sorts of clays out on the market and people need to be careful as to which clays they're actually buying. Um, there's different clays like keratin clay, which is usually used as a bulking agent. You can get it at health food stores. And then there's clays like the um, vermicolite clays, which actually are used for like pottery making and uh, different china ware. And so obviously you wouldn't want to use that in your body. The best type of clay is calcium bentonite clay which usually has a much higher pH balance. It usually has between 60 to 70 trace minerals in it. And oftentimes it's used for all sorts of healing. Gerson's therapy talks about using it for an alternative cancer therapy, mainly for pain and different internal uses, which we'll go through. But you really want to spend your money wisely. Clays can oftentimes be pretty expensive and so if you're going to spend a lot of money you want to make sure you have a good clay. The clay that I've used personally is living clay and I've witnessed really good results with that. So that's just one that I've used. There's plenty out there. Different things that you want to make sure of when you're buying a clay and what you want to look for in a clay is that it's pH balanced usually at least 8.0 or higher so that it's very alkaline. Living clay is 9.7, which is a very high alkalinity. And you also want to make sure that it's milled properly. Usually, I know with the living clay, they mill it through a 325 uh, screen, uh, screen mesh. And so that makes it so that it's very fine powder. And when you mix it, you're not getting clumpiness or any type of grittiness. Um, you also want to make sure that it has a very high drawing power, at least 32 times its molecular weight. And what that does, it is allows the body or allows the clay to absorb and pull things from your body at a much more effective rate. So those are basic things to look for. We want to make sure obviously on the label when it mentions ingredients that it says calcium bentonite and that that's the only uh, ingredient in it. So let's go over some of the different ways. First off, just how it is used. Basically, it's very absorb absorbent and it, um, it pulls a lot from your body. Obviously, we said it has a 32 times the molecular weight, meaning that 32 times the amount can come out and be leached through your skin or internal uses than the actual powder itself. And the reason why it's so good is that clay actually has a negative ion and it helps pull all the positive ions, which are usually what toxins are made of. So different uses, we're gonna go over the internal uses and the external uses. First, I wanna go over some internal uses and kind of how you would actually make the clay and use it. When you're dealing with internal use of the clay, you wanna dilute it so that you're using one part clay to eight parts water. And make sure always that you're using filtered, good filtered water, um, and also that you're not mixing it with metal. You can actually, I've read different places where they actually mix it with metal, but you don't wanna leave it on the metal because it pulls heavy toxins and heavy metals, and so it can actually corrode the metal or cause it to rust early on. So I just prefer not to use metal at all. If you can use a plastic, plastic uh, cap on a glass bottle is the best and you can just shake that up until it, it's pure, uh, purely mixed and nice and smooth. Or you can use a plastic spatula or something like that. So different things that you can use it for, reasons why you would use it internally, is one, to help pH balance your system. 
We've talked before about how disease thrives in an acidic condition, in an acidic body. And so if you can pH balance your body, you're more likely to be able to fight that disease and bring it under control. Being the fact that the clay is a 9.7 pH, or at least 8.0 um, and higher, depending on the clay that you're buying, you're obviously going to help pH balance the body, and that's super essential when you're healing just about with any disease. So it's alkalinizing to the body. It also is very detoxifying. It helps keep the bowels clean and healthy, which in our, one of our previous talks we talked about detoxing. You want to make sure that your colon is cleansed first. And any time that you are taking the clay internally, you want to make sure that you're drinking lots of water because obviously it is a clay and though it pulls and draws you want to make sure that you keep your intestines and really your whole body hydrated so that your bowels move properly but also so that your body just stays hydrated while you're pulling toxins it just helps flush the toxins out too also internally because it has 60 to 70 trace minerals if not more you're going to actually add minerals to your body which that's part of the pH balance, but also most people just lack minerals, especially with our soil being depleted of minerals nowadays, even, even with organic crops. So it's just one way to add minerals to your, your body. So you can use the clay on a daily basis. There's a couple different ways as far as detoxing. You can either do a general detox or a heavier type of detox. And if you're doing a general detox, like I said, you want to mix the clay, one part uh, clay to eight parts water. And you would take one ounce, or actually two ounces, one time in the morning and one time in the evening, if you're just trying to do a general detox. And what this does is just allows the body to kind of cleanse. Obviously, you want to be eating healthier anytime you're doing a detox. You don't want to continue eating sugar or processed foods or anything like that. You really want to eat as many fruits and vegetables and raw foods as possible. And so one thing that you want to make sure of is that you aren't taking the clay when you're taking medications. Um, that's one thing you'd want to talk to a medical doctor about. If you are deciding to take the clay and you are on prescription drugs, make sure you know how long the prescription drug takes to absorb into the body. That way you're not taking the clay and actually leaching that medication out of your system. Another way, more of a, a more uh, cleansing detox would be to take the clay liquid basically three times a day two ounces in the morning, two ounces in the middle of the day, and two ounces at night. And obviously, too, you want to make sure that you're not eating um, around this time that you're taking. You take it on an empty stomach so it can really go in and cleanse the system. So that's a general detox and then a more vigorous detox. Some other reasons why you could also use it internally is um, basically for cleansing your mouth if you deal with any type of thrush or canker sores, gingivitis, um, any type of internal viral issues, it's really good for cleansing that. And the reason why you'd want to do these detoxes is because it pulls and leaches out heavy metals especially, which a lot of people deal with heavy metal detoxes, especially with all the dental work done. But also, it just pulls viruses and bacteria, infection, all sorts of things out of the body. So even if you're using something in externally, you can also take it internally at the same time to just help promote that healing and cleansing effect. And I forgot to mention too, when you're doing the general detox, you would take those doses two times a day uh, for 14 days versus if you're doing a more vigorous, vigorous detox, then you would do it the three doses per day for 21 days. And then you can actually start taking it every day if you want to continue just one ounce a day on an empty stomach is how you would continue to do that. Other purposes for using it internally would also be to get rid of any type of food poisoning. It's helpful, helpful with that because obviously it's helping draw out that poison. Gerson's therapy mentions that it helps with diarrhea and also with 
um, the food poisoning, a way you could take it, is if you put one fourth teaspoon to one half a teaspoon of the clay in a cup of hot peppermint tea. The peppermint tea is also very soothing to the body, but that clay is going to help leach out any toxins. And so those are some basic fundamentals of why you could use it internally just to help detoxify the body. And next, in our next little segment here, we're going to be talking about how you can use it externally and the factors and benefits of that. Broadcasting from the stronghold of resistance, Kalispell, Montana, Northwest Liberty News. Thank you for joining us with Learning for Liberty. I'm Dr. Sarah Klingenberg, and now we will be talking about the external benefits of calcium benef um, bentonite and how you can use it and um, experience all its goodness. So externally, you can use it for many different reasons. First off, we'll talk about detox baths. If you're going to take a detox bath with the clay, usually what you would do is add one to two cups of clay in a bathtub full of water and you'd want to soak in that for about 10 to 20 minutes. What detox baths do is, one, it helps eliminate pain if you have any type of swelling or joint issues. It's very beneficial for that, but it also draws out toxins. The skin obviously releases a lot of toxins. It's our biggest organ in the body. And so you do release toxins through that. And people have noticed, testimonials of people have said that when they have a lot of heavy metal in their body, the water will actually kind of turn gray. So you can actually see the filth of your body, the toxins coming out and see the benefits of the clay working. Uh, another way that you can use it is through clay packs or poultices is what they're called. And usually what you would do, the way that you would make this clay pack is you wanna mix one cup of clay to three parts of water and like before when you use it internally you want to make sure that you're mixing it in either a glass or food grade plastic container and avoid metal for the most part if you can if you want to stir it with that you can but i prefer to use completely just glass or plastic and you would end up making it ends up being a very th thick clay something that you can easily easily um, spread onto like a flannel sheet and that's what I've always used in the past is just taking a flannel sheet making sure obviously that it's clean and then putting about one-fourth to three-quarters of an inch thick of the clay and what you're doing is you're using this for either swollen joints, um, edema, any type of inflammation or swelling you can use it on infections, on any type of skin rash um, tumors, a lot of people with alternative cancers will use it. It helps a lot with pain and just helping pulling out those toxins too. Uh, you can use it on even just canker sores or blemishes or whatever, but you want to take that pack and put it on wherever you're putting it on your skin very securely. So you put the pack on and then you would either wrap it with saran wraps to help keep that moisture in or at least an elastic band just to keep it in place. And the idea is to try to keep it moist for longer. So you can use it from anywhere from 30 minutes to all day depending on what you're treating. You just wanna make sure that it continues to stay somewhat moist. Once it dries out, then you can pull it off. And I have witnessed um, it really helps with pain for sure. And even things like menstrual cramps, people will use it for their stomachs and it really helps or low back pain. It'll really help with that. Just the kind of has a cooling effect, but it also has that drawing effect obviously for the inflammation. So inflammation oftentimes is associated with pain. And so it helps get rid of that pain for sure. And then, other things that you can use it for too would also be for um, like a toothpaste you can put it in. People have used it in different soaps. I'm not as familiar as how to make those different soaps and whatnot, but definitely toothpaste because it's so rich in minerals. If you make the clay itself and then add either some type of essential oil, whatever you want, peppermint, anything like that, 
you can actually use it as a toothpaste and it's very cleansing. Plus it's really good for your gums. It helps increase the circulation. And also back with the baths too and even just when you're putting on the clay packs, it also helps increase the circulation and the lymphatic system and that's part of the whole detoxing is when you increase your lymphatic system flow, you're obviously helping those toxins move and get out of the body. People also use clay for beauty reasons or kind of spa treatment type of reasons and you can actually make a mask out of it and that's the same way that you would make the clay for the poultices but obviously you could just put it on your skin. People have done body wraps and it's just helpful in kind of tightening the skin but like we said drawing out those toxins. That's the main point of calcium bentonite is to really detox, draw out those toxins and draw out the inflammation. And it's also something that I recommend that you really have on hand or if you're a backpacker or have grab and go bags, it's something that I think is really beneficial because if anything happens out on the trail or when you have nothing else, it used to be said that like the Indians would use it to even draw out poisons from snake bites or from bug bites. And so if you have nothing else, it's a great way to at least start drawing out some of that inflammation and some of the poisons. So that's all I have to share with you today on calcium bentonite. I hope that you'll join us next time as I talk about the different sugars, kind of pros and cons of alternative sugars and which ones are good and bad. So thank you again for joining us for Learning for Liberty, brought to you by Northwest Liberty News. Rocky Mountain air smells a lot like freedom. Northwest Liberty News.